Hello there. This is going to be a quick demonstration of the new universal real-time clock board I've designed for Z80 computers. Um, what you're looking at is an Amstrad PCW8512 which runs the CPM Plus operating system. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos you'll be familiar with the IDE device um, and this machine has booted uh, and has uh, loaded the IDE driver uh, which I wrote and um, then you can see there's some other preamble like uh, setting the default drive and setting up the serial port. Um, this is just my normal uh, profile.sub boot command. Um, so now um, of course the main thing with these machines is that um, when you start them up they always have the wrong date on them. I mean this is uh, 12 15 1982 that seems to be the default date that the PCW will will have when it starts up but if you have a real-time clock um, that is a device a separate clock that's battery backed up that keeps the time um, connected to your computer you can get it to set the system date automatically given the right software <clears throat> so this is the software that I want to demonstrate to you so the first thing is, um, let's just pop over to drive C. Uh, drive C is one of the UIDE drives. Um, so we have a utility here called urtc.com. And this is the utility that is used to uh, configure the real-time clock board and to transfer its time to the CPM system time. So when you first connect a URTC board to your computer, the first thing you need to do is to tell it what time and date it is. So um, that command would be day, month, year. And then the time at the moment, 12.05. So that's now told the RTC board that the time is 12.05 and that um, the date is Wednesday the 2nd of October 2019. Now a quick word about um, the, the year. Uh, as we all know there's a problem with the year 2000. Um, so when you pass in a two digit year like 19, the utility needs to decide whether it's 2019 or 1919. And the way it does this is it says, okay, if the year is less than 78, then I'm going to assume that it's in the, it's in the century 2000, um, so it's after 2000. Otherwise, I'll, I'll assume it's after 1900. And this is the same way that the, um, the date.com utility, which comes with CPM Plus, um, behaves. Uh, the, that is the year 2000 fixed version. So here we see it's correctly interpreted 19 as 2019. If I was to, um, let's get rid of the, the time for a second. If I was to make that um, 78, 1978, it should come up as 1978, there you go. So this means that you can set the time on the system to you know a time that is, or rather the date I should say, you can set the date to a date that is commensurate with its retro origin. So for example, if you were running software that, that uh, had to be run before the year 2000 because it had a bug in it, this is how you'd do it. Okay, so now, anytime you type in URTC, it will tell you what time it is on the, on the board. That is, the real-time clock is there and, you know, it's, it's fine. Now, if we were to power the machine down like this and then switch it back on again let it boot up it's a bit slow comes off the floppy drive okay so it will load the IDE drivers set the font and then set the serial port now if I do URTC again to, sh to show the time and the date on the, on the RTC clock board, you'll see it's still K 
correctly set. So that's that's pretty good. So that, that just means that the, the RTC board has got a battery inside it and it's working properly. But of course, CPM Plus still doesn't know what the date is because we haven't told it. So um, in order to transfer the RTC board time to the CPM system time, we need to use a slightly different command, URTC uh, minus TP. Now the P means for, for CPM plus because the utility is able to do the transfer to a super brain as well, which is a, which is a, a, a CPM 2.2 system. So we need to tell it that we're running on a, a CPM plus system. And when we press return, it reads it and then it sets the um, CPM plus system time. Note it's set 1978 because that's what we did when we did our last test. So um, I'm not happy with that. So what I want it to do is to set it to today's date. So again, URTC, now I put in a date, um, 021019. Um, I'm not going to enter a time because I'm quite happy with the time as it is. The time is correct. Um, so minus TP. So I can do it all in one step if I want to. There you go. So now the CPM plus system time is set to Wednesday, 2nd of October, which is when I'm recording this demonstration. Uh, and if I was to do date now, which is the CPM3 utility, of course it will come up with the same time. Right, and date. So far, so good. Um, now, if we want this to happen automatically at every boot up, we need to add that command. Um, in fact, just the one that transfers the time to our profile.sub. So at the moment, the pro profile.sub just has these three commands in it to set the font, to set the defaults um, search path and the order, and to set up my serial port. So um, I have another profile.sub on drive C, which I have prepared, which just adds the additional command to set the time. Um, so all I'll do is I'll copy that. Um, So if the .rtc is not important here, it's just a name that I've called the, the alternative profile.sub. So that gets copied across. And now we can look at it and you'll see it's just got an extra command in it, which is URTC minus TP minus Q. So the minus Q argument reduces the amount of messages it prints out. Um, and um, it's directly referencing the C drive. Anyway, if I reset the computer now, exit like that, we'll see that it will call the URTC uh, executable. It'll set the time. Okay, there it is. So it does that. And now if I do date, there you go, it's set correctly. Now, the skeptical amongst you will say, well, I didn't power the machine down. But so if I power the machine down and now do another cold boot, of course, it's going to do the same thing. Um, it will set the date. The CPM system date. There it goes. Bang. Um, so now if I do date, whoops, we have the correct date in our CPM3 system. Okay, so the question now really is um, now that we can um, set the time and date automatically, what can we do with it? Well, uh, the, the key use of this is to apply timestamping to files on your CPM3 system. However, before you do this, you need to prepare um, a disk 
for accepting the timestamps. Um, so I've got a I've got a I've got a disk here. This is a floppy disk. It's got a few files, a couple of files on it. I need to pull the boot disk out and I'll put this in here, like so. Um, now let's just see what's on there. Okay, so there are there's a couple of files on there. So before we can start using timestamps on on this disk drive, or rather on this disk. Uh, we have to use a utility called initdir. So that is on the C drive. Um, it doesn't seem to be on the standard CPM plus disk that comes with the PCW. Um, certainly not on the 8000 series machines. It, it seems to come with the 9000 series machines. Um, so what I've done is I've put a, a download um, on the wiki page. So there is a big wiki page that explains how to use the system. And one of the download links is for init dear. So, so you have to do that and tell it which drive you want it to uh, initialize. And it says, okay, I'm going to activate the timestamps. Yes, we do. Now, don't worry about reformatting the directory. The files don't get lost. It just rearranges the directory. Now, the, the, the implication of using timestamps is that you are... Um, using directory entries in order to store the timestamps. Uh, so what that means is if, if you have a drive with an awful lot of files on it, and I'm thinking in particular of the UIDE system, if you attempt to do init dir, it could run out of directory space because some of the some of the uh, the virtual disks um, that are supplied with the UIDE disk image um, just got a lot of files in them. Uh, in all user areas, so you might find that init dear could fail um, just because of that, but not on this disk. So now, if we were to do um, okay, so we have to, we have to now tell the system which type of timestamps we want to use. Um, so there are three types. Uh, one of them is create timestamp, which records when a file was created. Another one is update timestamp, which records whenever a file is updated. And the third type is access timestamp, which records every time a file is accessed, that is open, not necessarily changed. Um, you, you can't have access and create at the same time. That's the only, that's the only limit. So, for example, I mean, I think really that update and create are the, uh, are, are the most useful ones. So in order to tell the system that we want to set this, this particular disk for um, time stamping, um, we use the set command. So set, give the disk name, set A, and then create equals on. So that's the first thing. Now we can see that um, there's no password set um, create is on, stamp access is off, and update is off. And we'll just add update as well. I'll just use the handy PCW editing update. Update equals on. Okay, so now if we want to see timestamps, we use and just full. That's the option that shows all the information for every file. Um, and there we can see the two file names here, dir.com and urtc.com. And then over here, update and create. Now you can see that these fields are blank. And the reason these fields are blank is because neither of the two files have been updated or created since I switched um, the, the features on on this, on this disk. Um, so if I were to, um, let's see, add a file. Let's see. Mm. Let's let's copy that um, <clears throat> that profile file across that we used earlier. <clears throat> now, if I look at the directory listing again, okay, we can see that um, we have. Update and create timestamps for profile.rtc. If I do that click again to overwrite it, 
Um, so equals C profile.rdc. So I'm going to be effectively creating it. Um, sorry, I'll be effectively updating it. So when I do dir full again, oops, I should see that the um, Oh, no, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, it's done another create, so it's updated both timestamps. In fact, it doesn't appear to have updated. Oh, dear, it hasn't worked at all. All right. Um, never mind. How can I do this? Uh, well, all right, so um, take my word for it. This is not a problem with the URTC or the, or the, or the utility. This is just me not using CPM Plus properly. You can see that it's that it's written timestamps against profile.rtc, but not against dir.com or urtc.com. Um, anyway, that concludes the demonstration. Um, thank you for watching.